In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul. I'm a dead slain in the tech zone. All right, welcome back to the tech zone of Paul. I'm a dead slain here live on the floor of CES. 2020 ABC News Radio. What's happening? We're having a lot of fun checking out all the different tech here. We have seen some amazing and phenomenal things. I know we talked about it earlier on Sunday when we got here. We talked about how there's a new word coming out with the IoT. It's just not the Internet of Things no more. It's now the Intelligence of Things. That came out from our friends over at the Consumer Technology Association. So I guess when the VP of Research calls it the intelligence of things from the CTA. I think we may adopt that now, but we'll, we'll see what all of us think about that. But but it does make sense with artificial intelligence and everything. And there's some great technology here. When I first started coming to CES, it was all about televisions, smartphones, or even cell phones back in the day, tablets, computers. I remember when Comdex was the biggest show even before CES. But since Comdex went away, CES is now here. It's like blowing up. I mean, with seven or eight football fields worth of things. So you see a lot of amazing technology. And a lot of technology we're seeing now is when it comes to digital health and just the importance of, of having this type of innovation out there. And I'm joined right now with a very special guest, Dr. Jerry Wilmink, joining me talking about his product, Care Predict. Dr. Jerry, how are you, my friend? I'm doing fantastic. We're having a great show here at CES. Hey, great to have you Thank you for the opportunity. Great to have you. Thank you. So Thank what's you. been your impression so far here at CES? Uh, it's been a fantastic show. We've we've been here the last few years, and what we've seen is just, you know, the, the companies interested in solving real problems like ours are growing. Um, in, in, in the digital health space, there's a lot of problems and challenges we can address using, you know, advanced sensing, machine learning, and um, obviously connectivity kind of fueling it all. So. And, and, and being here for uh, several years, what have you seen as just kind of like the way technology has changed over the years? I, I think the, the biggest thing, biggest change I've seen in the last few years is that the bigger players are starting to be at the show. And this is primarily mediated by the fact that you know, voice is starting to become a big player, you know, so Google Assistant and uh, Amazon Alexa. And for seniors, we're seeing that this is going to be an important area where they can use their voice to help, you know, make their life easier. Um, and so I think a lot of the, the large technology companies that are in that space were growing. The smart home uh, space is growing very quickly. Um, and then, you know, obviously the TVs are still getting better every year, but uh, I think in digital health, we're seeing uh, a lot of integration of sensors and miniaturization of sensors and connectivity uh, that allows us to fuel better insights um, and predictive analytics. You know, the coolest thing about this, what we're talking about right now, uh, Jerry, is I just had on Steve Yule, who is the executive director from the Consumer Technology Association Foundation. Mm -hmm. We were talking about digital health and uh, the aging and adult population out there. And looking at, you have the baby boomers and the seniors out there who are really not maybe tech savvy. How can we bridge the gap to help them to see that this technology out here is really for their benefit? No, that's a great question. And I think the, the value of the product, it has to give them a lot of functions and features that make them and incentivizes them to want to wear the product and use it on a daily basis. Um, and, and that's something we've seen also with our product offering is what's in it for me, right? And so if we can collect this information and provide better insights for their caregivers and there's advantages for them to wear the product, then it's a win-win for everybody. And one of the things when it comes to... Uh the senior population out there, and even the members who are disabled, they really like their independence, and they really don't want anyone to to uh, encroach upon that independence. But your solution right here really helps them to have a measure of independence, but we as family members can, and caregivers can still keep track of them, really without them even knowing or, or feeling in, in, in intrusive. Mm -hmm. And talk about why that's so important to really help bridge this gap with them understanding this is really for their benefit. No, it's a great... It it's a great topic, and, and we have a tremendous gap between the number of seniors and the number of caregivers, 
right? The, the, we have a, a shortage of caregivers, and we, we typically need to have a lot of information to better understand what's going on with those seniors. So what our wearable device does is it actually is the, first, the world's first wearable that measures the changes in activities and behavior of the senior. And those behaviors are the earliest signs of health decline. And for many years, most technology players have been focused on using optical sensing and other physiological measurements or vital sign measurements uh, to detect and treat uh, individuals. The problem with that is that's far too late. You need to get much further upstream. You need to be predictive, preventative. And in order to do that, you need to look at their behavior and those changes in behavior, which are the earliest signs of a health decline. And that's really what Care Predict is most recognized for, is we have the most accurate measurements of a senior's activity and behavior. And when it comes to you creating uh, this innovation unit the team, what made you want to create it in, in the first place? The one thing I, I really appreciate is talking to uh, techpreneurs, entrepreneurs out there in the tech world something made them want to create this solution. So what mm -hmm. was the, 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 the brain trust behind creating this? Yeah, our, our founder CEO, Satish Mova, um, was an executive and a, a, a leader on the executive team at many home health companies and also an inventor of the original EMR for the Palm Pilot. And he was, he was caring for his mother and his father in their 80s and 90s in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And what he found is, he would visit them and things would pop up where he'd have to basically take them to the emergency room or reschedule his day during the work week to figure out how to get them and make sure they were provided the best care possible. So he said, you know what, these technologies out there that are basically reconfigured kind of security alarms that weren't giving really rich information and helpful information, he said, we, I can build something better than this. Um, and that's when Satish founded Care Predict in 2013 and uh, with his own resources grew it to a certain point and now we're you know, venture backed and growing quite quickly. Um, but he built it out of his own desire to provide better care for his, his mother and his father. I love it. I love it. You know, I have uh, aging parents myself and it, it's a struggle to try to flip the script where we become the caregivers and mm -hmm. take care of them. And, Sometimes they're not receptive to it, but but it's nice to have a piece of innovation out there to kind of kind of really helps helps us both, yeah. you know, bridge this little gap to make sure that we're there to help them out, get them to their appointments, and really really be able to monitor them so they can still have a measure a measure of independence out there. And you have a pretty unique role with the company as the chief business uh, development officer. When it comes to looking for strategic partnerships out there, what is the, the main thing you're looking at? Uh, to make sure that it's really achieving the objective of the company? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, you know, the, the product and offering, this is series three, you know, our version three of our product. The initial versions we installed in independent living, assisted living, and memory care communities. And that's where we developed all of our predictive models for identifying the earliest signs of a health decline, whether it's for depression or the earliest signs of someone at risk for a fall. We kept getting in inbound demand for seniors that are aging in place. And in the United States, we have 50 million seniors and only 2 million are living in group living communities and 87 to 90% want to age in place. So as we kept growing, we had this inbound demand from the families and even seniors themselves saying, can you make a product kit for the home? Because whether they couldn't afford assisted living or they weren't ready to move into an assisted living community and they wanted to stay in their own home, they wanted it for their own, they wanted a kit for their house. And unfortunately, um, caregivers on average live 280 to 300 miles away from a senior and the unpaid caregivers. So they need information to know that mom or dad or grandma or grandpa is okay yes. at a distance. Um, so this, we're really providing those eyes and ears for them um, if they live you know, at a distance. Yes, so true, so true. Now, you bought a little demo. Oh, yes. And then we can check out. So let's, uh, let's check it out, my friend. You got it. So the, the reason that we can collect such high fidelity and accurate data is that we have a wearable device that we've designed specifically for seniors that houses a array of different sensors, including accelerometers, gyro, uh, temperature sensor, humidity sensor, optical sensing for heart rates. But what it does particularly well is we run this at a very fast rep rate. So it can pick up subtle changes in the kinematics of my wrist. 
and it's placed on the dominant arm of the senior. So when the senior now goes into the dining room, our context beacon knows they're in the dining room. And as, it, as they bring food from table to face, it picks up their personalized eating gesture and digitize and quantifies that duration automatically. So then over a two-week period, it trains our neural nets. And after that two-week training period, it now knows here's mom's eating, drinking, bathing, personal care gestures, brushing teeth. And when you see different things um, go outside and uh, outside of that baseline, it can flag those behaviors and say, you may want to take a closer look at this. You know, it doesn't look like mom is exercising or she's skipping meals. And they could be the earliest signs that maybe she's depressed. You know, so we're, we're really putting together a comprehensive look at their health and their wellness in their own home. Wow. I'm like blown away with sensors and, 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 and everything, you know, just, just how it how it really uh, just uh, is changing the game. You know, we think of sensors of, of, of uh, monitoring like gas and, and things like that. But now we're seeing it just monitoring movements and everything, nanotechnology, artificial intelligence. Man, Jerry, we are just blown away by this innovation man it's exciting it's an exciting time i think that's really it is the the sensors the miniaturization of the sensors and then the ability to collect information uh continuously is impacting health and in particular digital health and you said this is the third generation of the product third generation yes we've had a lot of learning since uh, the company was founded in 2013 um, and we've been expanding quite quickly in the united states and also in japan uh, so in, in Japan, they actually are in much more dire circumstances than us in terms of the caregiver shortage. Um, in, in Japan, they actually uh, have over 35 million seniors, and their population is one-third of that in the United States. And so we've been working with some of the leaders across uh, Japan to actually help augment those caregivers and, and provide the care that they need for their seniors in Japan. And what I, what I think is pretty, pretty amazing in the world where we live in today with technology in this new decade is just how this is going to help bridge the gap of caregiving helping ones out there it's it, it's it's a great time to be alive you know yeah, it, it is you know, 15 20 years ago you know we didn't have this type of innovation and, and imagine you know just how uh, ones who are part of the aging and adult population and their families and caregivers and now that we have this Imagine some of the things that can be staved off early. It, you got it. This piece of you got it. No, and even with this wearable device, uh, we put a lot of features in here that are really, really valuable to the senior. If they need anything, it basically is concierge service. They hit the button and can speak right into their wearable like a, um, a walkie-talkie, and it talks to their family members right through our Care Predict app. So they can ask for assistance or say they're okay, and it also has fall detection as well. So if they fall, that emergency alert can be sent to the family members, and they can check in. And, you know, it's providing the best care for them possible. We got some Star Trek technology here. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. Let's do this. I, I love it. I love it. I love it, Jerry. This is, this is awesome. Anything else out there you'd like to articulate to the viewer, to the listener out there, uh, about the product and the innovation that we haven't covered yet? I, I would just say go to carepredict.com. And, you know, check out our, our offering. It is, we're finding we've had tremendous success for seniors that are living in uh, assisted living and memory care communities. And we're going to see, we're going to see those results in the home setting. And we're excited to work with, with you. Thank you. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away, my friend. Um, seniors, the uh, disabled community, I think you have just hit a gold mine. With, uh, with helping helping us out, you know, as a member of that community and having parents who are a little older, you know, it, it's refreshing to to see this type of innovation here. Because I tell you, sometimes when we talk about CES, people just think about, oh, I need an 80-inch TV, I need this, I need that. No, this is like real-life solutions right here. Yeah, exactly. Even though I don't think we can live without our, our, our TVs, but <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. But, yeah, real-life solutions, and, and what you guys are doing over there is, is truly amazing. How can one find out more information again about, about the product and then keep a, abreast yeah. of uh, everything? Yeah, please visit us at carepredict, C-A-R-E-P-R-E-D-I-C-T, carepredict.com. Awesome. Well, awesome. Great chatting with you, Dr. Jerry uh, Wilmink. Uh, awesome, awesome information. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank Love you for you guys on getting us on the show. The year and catch up and see how you guys are doing. I think it's pretty phenomenal. Thank you so much for the time. All right, when we get back, folks, we're going to be joined by some other great guests here. 
at CES 2020. Wasn't that amazing? Care Predict. I mean, if you have family members who are uh, seniors, disabled, you name it, this product right here is really like a godsend. And really find out more information about it. I think it's incredible. And uh, we're going to talk more about this in later shows. I, I promise you about that. All right, when we get back, don't miss me too much. We'll be right back with more Tech Zone coming up after this. In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul. I'm a dead slain in the tech zone. 